she would put together a list of space effects and I would read them ASMR style and she would talk a little bit about ASMR in her video and kind of like introduce our audiences to each other so um, thank you Becky I'm really excited to talk about space everybody should go check out her channel which I will link in the description below I've watched a few of her videos and I like them all a lot. They're all super entertaining and you learn a lot. So if you are new here and you don't know what ASMR is, it's basically a tingling sensation that some people get in their head or in their body um, when they're feeling like calm and relaxed. Um, I would describe it as for people who enjoy going to doctors and listening to them fill out forms, personal attention, tapping, just kind of like oddly satisfying things. All of these things could be ASMR. It's a very wide umbrella and it stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. ASMR can be visual too. So, light as a trigger is very popular. So I just, yeah, brought this to kind of explain. So just a tingle you feel when somebody whispers really close. So it's very broad. Um, some people listen to ASMR without actually experiencing the tingles. Um, and you can get desensitized, become desensitized to it also, where if you listen to a bunch of it, it no longer kind of has that tingling effect. But personally, I've been listening to it so long and now making it for about a year that Sometimes I become desensitized, but I still listen to it because it's relatively calming and really good as background noise when you're kind of sick of listening to music. When I was in engineering school, I would pretty much listen to ASMR nonstop just because music was almost too stimulating, but somehow ASMR wasn't. Or maybe ASMR was more grounding and calming, and I would just rather listen to tapping. Tapping. But that's a long tangent, so I'm sure what everybody is here for are some fun space facts. Facts, 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 facts. So are we ready? Once again, thank you, Becky, for putting these together. I read them through and they're all really good. Da, 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 here we go. Saturn is less dense than water, so if you could find an ocean large enough, Saturn would float. Float, float, float. That one kind of makes me think or makes my artist brain comes out and I'm like, oh, that'd be a, a cool visual of a planet floating in water. Water, water, water. Uranus spins on its side. A day on Venus is longer than a whole Venus year. That one made me think for a second and I was like, oh, because it goes around the fun the sun so quickly. If the sun was the size of a tennis ball, Beetlejuice. I hope that's how you say it because it's spelled differently, but Beetlejuice would be the size of the London Eye. So Beetlejuice is another star. So a tennis ball, not big compared to the London Eye. Bigger than that, I guess. But <laughs> as the sun would be the 
size of a baseball. Baseball, 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 baseball. In two billion years' time, our galaxy, the Milky Way, will merge with its neighboring galaxy, Andromeda. 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 Do you think humans will still be alive in two million years? Probably not, but maybe. If we don't, uh... Well, let's not get grim. <laughs> Space is so big that even in a galaxy merger, no two stars collide. That's crazy. Let's see. A galaxy merger. No two stars collide. They all just whoosh. That's kind of like the space within an atom. Everything's so far apart from each other, even on a molecular level. But don't quote me on that. Biology was never my strong point. <laughs> or chemistry. Chemistry especially. I was more of a physics girl. The universe is just under. Well, how old do you think the universe is, if you were going to guess? It is just under 14 billion years old. Old, old, old. In every teaspoon of space, there is at least a proton's worth of dark matter. If you fell feet first, fell feet first, first fell feet first into a black hole, you'd get stretched out like spaghetti in a process called spaghettification. Spaghettification. Stretched, 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 stretched out. That reminds me of Stellar, which is a great, great film, and I cried like a baby. <laughs> I heard that they actually got quite a bit um, of their science correct, which was really cool. It blows my mind, like, how time passes differently depending on the gravity of the planet, and I hope I'm saying, look, I'm not even an astrophysicist, and I'm trying to put my own space facts in here. Um, spacesuits have a velcro patch inside the helmets so that astronauts can scratch their face. Speaking of face scratching. Oh, that's so interesting. There's so many things that I think we take for granted that would be just totally turned upside down if we were in space uh, with zero gravity. I know that there's a lot of issues with, like, radiation and a lot of things you kind of don't think about. There's no weather on the moon, so the footsteps from the Apollo astronauts will stay there for millions, millions of years. That's really... I don't know, that makes me feel an emotion I can't identify. Kind of lonely, I think. The moon was formed from the debris left behind when another planet collided with Earth in the early days of the solar system. I knew this one when something hit Earth and a piece broke off and it's spinning around and getting compacted until we have a little moon. Olympus Mons is the highest mountain in the solar system at 13 miles high. Mount Everest is only 5.5 miles high. And I don't know if this is true, but I think Olymp Olympus Mons is on Mars. So uh, you can correct me on that if I'm wrong. Saturn. Saturn, Saturn, Saturn which is my favorite planet, and I think most people's favorite planet. No, Jupiter's cool too, I guess.